It's UMG. There why user-centric royalties will never be globally implemented. Lucian Grange, CEO of UMG, in a letter to his staff back in January, framed user-centric royalties as pitting artists in one genre against artists in another, in an effort to vilify a payment system that is ultimately fair to the music community as a whole, and definitely fair for the fans. But why? LG talks about the current pro rata system. If you don't know what that is, watch this video. You know, he talks about this system as not being sufficient and talks about needing to move to an artist-centric model that benefits all artists and fans alike, not one that pits artists in one genre against artists in another. Now, this is a clear shot at user-centric royalties as studies have shown that adoption of a user-centric payment system would rebalance how royalties are allocated across genres. Now, this is a poor argument on LG's side because he completely fails to mention that underrepresented artists in those bigger genres would also benefit from the royalty rebalance that a switch to a user-centric payment system would bring. Now, I believe that this is very intentional as he knows that the correct moral royalty payout is a user-centric one and that it is all artists first because it properly balances out payments across all artists, unsigned indies to major label artists. And the pro rata system is clearly out of balance as it apportions royalties purely based on streams. It doesn't matter where those streams come from, right? The more streams you get, the more money you get, period. Because of this, it is ripe for manipulation, further diverting revenue away from genuinely earned streams. Correcting this imbalance so that royalties are fairly allocated is not pitting artists in one genre versus artists in another. It's correcting a flaw in the current system. And as already noted, the redistribution of royalties will also happen within genres. So while hip hop might see fewer overall royalties, some smaller hip hop artists will see boosts to their royalties. So the picture LG attempts to paint of this genre versus genre battle is patently false. The reality is that any correction to any monetary system will almost always mean some redistribution of wealth. Therefore, it's naive to assume that this isn't going to happen when changing from the current pro rata system to any other system. So on these grounds, I don't see how UMG's unspecified artist-centric model will be any different. Let's see what UMG and Tidal come up with. In an earlier video, I assumed that the diverse music portfolios held by the major music groups would buffer them against a royalty shuffling brought on by a user-centric payment model. Beginning to think I was wrong. When you look at the potential impact of a switch to Universal Music Group's revenue model, it might be bigger than I thought. For example, in 2022, four out of the top five artists streamed globally on Spotify were under Universal Music Group. Taylor Swift, Drake, The Weeknd, and yes, BTS. Collectively, these four artists are responsible for a crazy number of streams. Given that many of these streams are likely from the same accounts, fans streaming the songs consistently, there's a high likelihood then that UMG's promise to shareholders of achieving 25% EBITDA margin could be hampered by a shift to a user-centric model. Now, without going into depth on this, EBITDA is basically a calculation of profitability. The higher the margin, the better. And the fact that UMG is a publicly traded for-profit company makes it hard for me to believe LG's claim that UMG can never be regarded as merely a checkbook and distribution company. Entertainment lawyer Bindu de Knok notes in her book, The All-Round Musician, that record labels are for-profit enterprises which will generally put them at odds with the motives of many artists and composers. She also further points out that any publicly traded label has a fiduciary obligation to serve their shareholders' interests i.e. produce profit. Now, she doesn't write this to say record labels are evil, but just to make musicians aware that record label motives are not necessarily going to align with artists and to keep this in mind when entering negotiations with a label. That UMG is a publicly traded entity with the primary responsibility of generating profit for the shareholders immediately puts UMG in the position where they have to prioritize these interests over the interests of other stakeholders, that is to say, the artists and composers themselves. No matter how Lucian Grange tries to spin it, that's just the way it is. Certainly, it means that UMG will look to leverage systems that will benefit artists on their roster over systems that would fairly benefit all artists because the more money UMG artists make, 
the more money UMG makes, and therefore, the happier the shareholders are. Because a user-centric payment system would pull royalty revenue away from their top earning artists, and therefore UMG itself, the only incentive that UMG has to back user-centric royalties is moral. Immorality isn't going to raise UMG's share price. Now, Lucian Grange makes a point about talking about bad actors. And while he talks about bad actors taking advantage of the current system, he doesn't endorse a system that would actually limit the impact these bad actors could have. He laments the gamification of the system by labels and artists creating 31 second tracks that trigger royalty payouts or pumping out meaningless generic tracks to get streams and take royalties away from artists who are creating meaningful music. Under user-centric royalties, these tracks will only receive royalties from the accounts that stream them. And once that pot is divvied up, there's no additional revenue being taken from it. Unlike how Universal Music Group's top artists are unfairly taking revenue away from smaller artists with smaller, but equally dedicated fan bases that would then benefit from a fair royalty distribution model. Now, a recent study showed that in France alone, Streaming fraud, so purchase streams, etc., account for 1-3% to of all streams. But here's the kicker. That study showed only what percentage of fraudulent streams were caught by the DSPs who participated in the study. The number of fraudulent streams that escaped detection could easily account for a further 1-3%, to if not more. Now, according to research firm Luminate, there were a total of 3.4 trillion music streams globally last year. 1 to 3% of this figure equals between 34 billion and just over 1 trillion streams. Now, the two largest music streaming services, YouTube excluded, are Spotify, which pays around one third of a cent, and Apple Music, which pays around 70% of a cent. If we split the difference between these two, we end up with about a half cent per stream. And if we apply this half cent to the figures above, then we are looking at potentially 170 to $510 million that can be diverted every year from artists due to fraudulent activity that goes unnoticed. Now, under a user-centric payment model, fraudulent streams would no longer draw such large royalty sums away from artists not engaging in the practice of buying streams to inflate chart or playlist positions. The money that these streaming farms pay for their subscriptions is the only money that the artists engaging in these services would receive. Could these artists receive other royalties as their music crosses listeners' paths due to the various algorithms employed by DSPs? Sure. But music listeners aren't the brain-dead zombies incapable of making decisions about what music they like and don't like, contrary to LG's opinion. If an algorithm throws a song in front of me that I don't like, I know how to hit the next button. The song might get half a listen, but if it's not good, I'm not gonna listen to it, and other music fans aren't going to listen to it again, so the damage is limited. There are, of course, people who just put Spotify on and let it play all day without really paying attention to it, and sure, these tracks could get played, but again, thanks to a user-centric payment system, no royalties other than the contributions from those listeners are paid for those streams no matter how often this listener streams them. Lucian Grange wants a system that is fairer for fans as well. Well, I know of no fans that want to pay for artists they don't listen to. Part of my royalty contribution goes to artists like Megan Thee Stallion and Justin Bieber, artists whose music means nothing to me. How's that fair? Furthermore, Streaming fraud and gamification mean that more of my royalty contribution is being diverted away from the music I care about. How is it fair to fans that they are forced to financially support artists they don't care about and that up to a half a billion dollars of their contribution gets diverted to people gaming and otherwise cheating the system? UMG is the largest music group in the world, representing some of the world's best and most historic music brands. DECA, Interscope, Def Jam, Capital, EMI, Mercury, the list goes on. This means that they have an incredible amount of clout when it comes to shaping and defining the future of the music industry. If they don't get behind a user-centric payment system, there's no chance for user-centric royalties to gain widespread adoption. 
It really is a shame that such a self-professed music lover such as Lucian Grange would verbally condemn fraud and gamification of music streams for diverting revenue away from artists while silently condoning these actions by failing to stand behind a payment model that would seriously limit the impact that these abuses have on royalty payouts simply because his top artists are directly profiting from the same model. The moral and ethical reasons for adopting a user-centric payment system are clear. So LG's refusal to consider the model shows that UMG puts profits before music, contrary to what Lucian Grange wrote in his letter to staff. UMG is large enough that they could drive radical just change if they would only put their morals where their mouth is. So what can you do? You can like, share, and repost videos and articles that talk about user-centric royalties and streaming fraud. If you're an independent artist, you can choose to release through SoundCloud for Artists, thereby taking advantage of fan power royalties through Go, SoundCloud's streaming service. If you're assigned to a label, talk to other artists on the label. Talk to label management. Tell them what you would like to see happen. Labels and publishers benefit when their artists benefit. And without artists, they wouldn't exist, so use this to your advantage. And lastly, perhaps most importantly, communicate to your fans. Let them know what's happening with their money. Get them involved in the discussion so they understand the true impact of their monthly payments. Me, I'll definitely keep talking about it, making videos about it, and who knows? Maybe collectively we can affect some real change. Speaking of change, if you have some extra change kicking around and you get value from my content, please consider buying me a coffee or perhaps buy yourself or someone a happily ever mug or t-shirt. My goal is to produce much more content and to do this, I need access to more resources and data which are often hidden behind paywalls and time. Time to plan, write, film and edit content. So every bit of income I can make from this channel will help by giving me access to better resources and allow me to take more time to focus on making this channel better for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, cheers.